So, Roger, Global Marketer of the Year, how does it feel? Firstly, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously it's always a nice feeling to be recognized by your peers and by the industry. Uh, but I have to absolutely clarify uh, that I feel so grateful for having an amazing team that's very competent, they're very passionate, and the work they tails off. And that's what makes me look good. And that's the reason why I very got this award. So I feel really grateful to them and feel blessed to have a team like that. That's fantastic. And in the end, I mean, great marketing is usually an awful lot to do with great leadership. I mean, how, how do you lead your team? How have you, because I think this year, if I look back, you've done some incredible things, you know, the very bold moves, actually. The logo change, um, the sonic branding, taking price list to a new level. How do you keep your team motivated? How are you getting all this great work out? So I guess, first and foremost, uh, it's most important to find talent around you who know a lot more than what you do and who know things that you do not know. So collectively, you complement each other so that's the first thing. Second, whenever I'm looking to build my team or to add any new team members, I try to look at the cultural fit, the attitude. Third, most importantly, whenever you go into any new role, you inherit a number of people. So when I came into MasterCard six years back, I inherited a team. Now the key thing is, you don't want to really change the team for the sake of changing the team. Try to understand what they can do best and then try to cross train them because what happens typically in the field of marketing is that you have got contemporary skills and you got the classical skills. And typically you find people are not necessarily solid on both these areas. Yeah. You find the contemporary marketers from the Silicon Valley types or you find the classical marketers from the Unilever, Procter and Campbell's of the world. And I had a mix of both and what I needed to make sure was that I was cross training them. The other aspect is also partnerships make a lot of difference. So when you say team, it's not only people who are being paid for by your company directly as employees, but also your agencies, also your other partners who help you in your quest for innovation. And when they all get excited about the common purpose, the lofty aspirations that we have got, and when you start being with them in the trenches as opposed to being ivory tower leader, I think it makes a lot of difference and that's what I feel very grateful for, the kind of changes that we have been able to bring about. Yeah, well, and, and you can see actually what's interesting about this award, of course it is voted by the people of marketing and you can see what they say and they're extremely complimentary about that down in the trenches and sleeves rolled up nature that you have as well, which is I think powerful. But can, can I ask you a little bit about um, McCann in this and into public because you know I was fascinated listening to you talk about how you see the agency partnership and actually if you go a long way back I mean I've always admired Priceless as one as the one of the great global marketing ideas actually and you've stuck with the same people um, through thick and thin no doubt. Absolutely so Priceless as a campaign platform was created in 1997 I believe uh, and it's going pretty strong till now. And the only couple of changes that we made, one was to expand its scope from being an advertising platform to being a holistic marketing platform, which means all our experiential platforms are now working off of Priceless. They try to make Priceless more tangible and uh, offer it to our consumers and sort of uh, a very different kind of an approach than what we have been historically having, but leveraging the equity that we have built in Priceless over the years. Uh, a lot of people ask me, are you trying to in-house your agencies and are you really working with the same agency and how are they keeping up and so on. So for me, I think they have been wonderful partners. You know, McCann and IPG in total, they have been terrific partners for us. Uh, we keep a sharp eye on the costs, which is one clear area, yeah. but we keep a bigger eye or a sharper focus on the outcomes. Yeah. So whether it is the performance of the campaigns or the creative excellence and the strategic consistency, nobody better to really understand that through the changing times than a long-standing agency partner. Yeah. So what we do is, first and foremost, make sure that we treat the agencies as an extension and an integral part of our team. That makes a lot of difference, number one. 
Number two, we make sure that we keep a sharp eye on the costs. So the reason for us to keep looking outside or differently is not really uh, there. And the third thing is we also try to keep uh, completely in uh, touch with the latest and the best developments and the examples and the experiments from other companies and what their uh, outcomes have been and what their learnings have been. We try to learn from them and see yeah. are we sure that we are being at the cutting edge. I think the other thing, we were privileged to have your boss um, come and spend some time with us. Uh, and and one of the things he talked about, which I'd never heard before, which I absolutely loved, was this notion that to be a great leader, of course, you must have high IQ and you must have high EQ, but he deeply values DQ. And DQ, correct. Can you talk about that? Because I was fascinated by that. I hadn't heard it before. And, I, and it so resonated with me. I really liked it. Yeah. See, I think this is something which uh, inspires me quite a lot, right? And I have had the privilege of working for my current boss, even in my previous company at uh, Citibank for a number of years. Uh, and he's probably one of the uh, most decent human beings that I have worked with, in addition to being an amazing professional himself. Uh, and one of the things that he has started really driving through the company from a cultural point of view is, yes, you need very competent and intelligent people, so IQ is very important. Uh, interpersonal relationships are very, very critical because you need to uh, know how to work with other people. You just don't want to be a tech nerd, but you also want to be a people's person to be able to bring about that cultural momentum and movement. But more fundamental than these is DQ, which we call it as a decency quotient. You need to be a good human being. Uh, you can do things, uh, the first two IQ and the EQ very well, but if your decency quotient is not good, you're a bad human being, you can be very toxic. And that is terrible for the company in terms of its culture, in terms of its people, etc. It's not just all about success. It's about the kind of environment that you are living in and the purpose that you are after. If you have a social purpose integrated into the core business model, it's going to make a profound change. Now, that's a big hypothesis. Is it really going to do that? Uh, and we started experimenting. For example, we started partnering with an organization called Stand Up to Cancer Foundation. Mm -hmm. And they are all about raising the awareness about cancer and trying to find cures for cancer. We partnered with them and we integrated into the core of our business. We said, for example, every year during summer for eight weeks, you use your MasterCard at any restaurant. And each time you use it, we contribute one or one and a half cents to this cause. And so far, we have been able to raise more than $45 million. Fantastic. But more importantly, what we have actually been enabled in, the, in doing this whole thing is, six drugs have already been discovered and FDA approved for different types of cancer. What that does is, it's a sense of pride for the whole employee base. And they say, hey, I'm working for something. It's not just a credit card company or a credit card technology company, but it's really a company which has got a larger purpose. Likewise, our partnership with World Food Program, where again, we run promotions and say, if you are using your MasterCard, so we don't hide the fact that this is all about not just philanthropy, but it is a business and the social cost really intertwining with each other. So we have, uh, you know, we are on track to donate about 100 million meals to the World Food Program coming out of this. What we have seen is it enhances the brand image in the consumer size, quantitatively measured. It enhances my share of wallet in those categories or in those geographies very clearly, which is again a return on the marketing dollars that we're investing. Plus, you are truly making a difference to the world. Like for example, this World Food Program that we had partnered with and uh, started giving these free meals for children at school, uh, at their schools mostly in Africa, the school attendance has gone up by almost 11%, and amongst girls it went up by 14%. Now when our employees look at all this, they feel terrific. We also said it's not just enough for us to do as a company. Can you guys as employees come up and then do something on your own? Yeah. Uh, and I'll just give you one example. So one of the persons who was working on the team, uh, she was very passionate about girls. And she started an initiative called Girls for Tech, where she picks up girls who are in the age of 11 to 13 and try to demystify science and technology, the STEM functions basically, and make it very interesting and exciting so that girls will actually break away from that stereotype and start getting involved in STEM. And we are on track to cover nearly 200,000 kids by the end of next year. Uh, I'm talking about girls, right? That's a huge quantitative, if Fantastic. you see it, that's pretty big. And this is just because of the initiative one employee has taken 
a bunch of employees have done something about uh, uh, ALS. So they wanted to raise the awareness of ALS and they created a program called Salsa. They said, you make a salsa move, it's like the ice bucket yeah, challenge, yeah, yeah. and then there'll be awareness created, and then they have raised, I believe, about $200,000 already for the cause. And when employees start owning this under the priceless causes platform, and they start doing it, uh, there is a sense of so pride uh, amongst people. Are we going to get you to do a salsa move to raise some money? Not exactly. <laughs> I have done my moves. <laughs> 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 So perhaps, I mean, this is just a wonderful thing to hear because this makes you a, a worthy winner of Global Marketer of the Year and great to hear that you've been recognized for that and also Thank you. a real honor to know that you're stepping up to be the president of the WFA. So perhaps if we can segue into that, what, what as you look forward to uh, what I've thoroughly enjoyed as a real honor and a privilege, you know, what's your agenda going to be? How are you going to build on the phenomenal work that these great people have done and do day in, day out? So firstly, I feel absolutely honored and humbled uh, to uh, be selected for this uh, role, uh, which you have been so ably doing for the last four years. And that I have okay. seen, uh, as a member of WFA, the kind of leadership you have provided to this organization and the kind of real change that has happened over, the, over these years. So one of my first things will be to emulate you. Oh. Number one. And number two. It's extremely easy. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're being very modest. Yeah. And, and I know, you know of what impact that you have brought to the table. Uh, my basic objective will be, uh, I would say, uh, at three levels. First and foremost, as marketers, as a community of marketers, we have got an incredible power to shape the cultures of the societies uh, and to really drive uh, social causes. Uh, and one of that would be my first area of focus to say how can we really bring this about, uh, which is how can we leverage the buying power that we have collectively as a marketing community. It it comes with some amount of responsibility. How do we own that responsibility, and then how do we drive that kind of a social change appropriately? Whether it is you know stereotypes, or you're talking about uh, the responsibility that you want to place on various media outlets, uh, you know particularly the social media channels, uh, to make sure that uh, the society is not disrupted, and so on and so forth. So one part of it is the uh, social agenda. Yeah. The second thing I would say is. Uh, marketing talent, I think, is very critical. So today, uh, I see that marketing is no longer as glamorous as it used to be 30 years back when I entered the marketing field. In those days, all the top students would naturally gravitate towards marketing. Today, that's not happening. The top talent moves either into Silicon Valley, or they start their own company, or they join an investment bank or a consulting firm. So what we need is to really attract the talent, bring back the excitement of marketing because there are very few functions which will help you leverage the left side of your brain yep. and the right side of the brain and interact with people and make a social difference. I think it's probably one of the most exciting fields. Even if I am biased, I can say <laughs> that. It is by far the most exciting field. And we need to attract people back into that yep. uh, and bring that. Because again, the marketer of today is different than the marketer of yesterday. Yep. Today's marketer is more a general manager with understanding of data, with understanding of technology, digital technologies particularly, with understanding of financials and marketing. So they cannot just be pure marketing specialists and hope to take the roles at the top. So I think that's going to be a second big area of priority for me. The third thing is from a marketing impact point of view, whether it is brand safety, whether it is measures and metrics, uh, whether it is efficiency and efficacies, it's a deployment of new technologies that will make marketing more effective. I think it's a vast field that is out there. The key thing is to identify these large blocks collectively, which are important for all the CMOs and all the marketing community. It has to be led by their needs and their desires and focus the attention of the community in total and you know, prioritize and work on them. And you know, just like what you have done, which is one thing which I really appreciated always, is it's not just to talk about the philosophy, but to come out with tangible outcomes that people can take away back to their real jobs or yeah. full time and then do something about it and then implement them. So that's what my focus would be largely. Well, I'm looking forward to your presidency, Raja. I know the team are, um, and we wish you every success as you move ahead. And, and you can win Global Marketer of the Year again. You can even win it as president. So good luck next <laughs> I <year>. didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Raja, Raja Manar, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank Likewise. you.